What's up YouTube? It's Chris with Murphy Firearms Training. I want to talk about MOA, minute of angle, minute of an angle. So this is a measurement and I find a lot of people sort of kind of know this, but they don't really know it. Um, so MOA is minute of an angle and one minute is one sixtieth of a degree or another way of saying that is one degree is equal to 60 minutes. Okay, so here's the deal. I've got one minute, one MOA at 100 yards. And what I want to find is if I adjust, so here's where I'm aiming and here's where my bore is pointing, right? What is this distance at 100 yards? Now, the first thing we need to do is turn 100 yards. So I'm going to say 100 yards times three. That's going to give us 300 feet. And then times 12 and that's going to give us 3,600 inches. And that's going to come in handy in a second. So that's 3,600 inches. Now, if you remember your basic trigonometry, this angle, this side's across from it. That's our opposite. This side's next to it. That's our adjacent. Opposite over adjacent is a tangent equation. And so our equation is going to be tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. Now, I want to solve for this side right here. So if I do that, what I end up with is I get 3,600 inches times the tangent of 1 60th of a degree is equal to this opposite side. So I'm going to take that 3,600 times the tangent of 1 60th. And hit enter. And what do I get? I get 1.04719, 1 all that stuff. Okay, so I'm going to write that down. 1.04719, 1 dot, dot, dot. Okay, and depending on how accurate you want to be, you could call that 1.05, you could call it 1.047, whatever you want to do. Okay, but a lot of people will tell you that at 100 yards, one MOA is one inch, okay? And for all intents and purposes, especially if you keep your shots within two or 300 yards, this is true. My problem is people are getting out now to 1,700 and 2,000 yards. That little bit of decimal starts to matter. So if I take this at, at 1,000 yards, that'd be times 10, right? You're getting it 10 and a half inches, not 10 inches. So depending on what you're doing, that may matter. But basically, the way this works is at 100 yards, 1 MOA, 1.047 inches, okay? Now, um, so first things first, not quite a 1 to 100 ratio like a lot of people will tell you online. Second of all is as you increase this distance, this distance increases at the same rate. So what that means is if I took this distance and made it 500 yards, okay, five times as big, then this would also be times five, okay? So it'd be 1.047 times five, which would be 5.235 inches, okay, at 500 yards, okay? So it's kind of an interesting thing, and if you want to, you can kind of hang on to that number there, that 1.047 MOA, uh, that 1.047 inches is equal to one, 1 MOA at 100 yards, and whatever multiplier you add to this, by the way, it does go the other way. If instead of 100 yards, if I cut this down to 25 yards, right, which is this divided by 4, then this would also be, guess what? Divided by four. And it would be about a quarter of an inch. So one MOA at 25 yards is about a quarter of an inch. Okay? So anyway, that's what MOA means. And the last piece I want to add to this is um, they sell a thing for rifles called a 20 MOA rail. And the way a 20 MOA rail works is if you've got your rifle, I'm going to attempt to draw a rifle poorly here. There. There's your rifle, okay? If you have a rifle and you're trying to shoot that way, a 20 MOA rail 
from the beginning to the end actually drops 20 MOA. Okay, and again, depending on the length of the rail as to how much that drop is, because it's an angular measurement, but it drops 20 MOA from front to back. What that allows is it allows you more vertical adjustment on your scope for long range shooting. So a friend of mine recently asked me, should I buy a zero MOA or a 20 MOA rail to put on my rifle? The longest shot he is ever going to take is 200 yards. He does not need a 20 MOA rail. If you're not going out past 500 yards, a 20 MOA rail is really no good for you, okay? The idea behind this 20 MOA rail is that you get more vertical adjustment out of a cheaper scope. You don't have to have as many clicks in your scope to hit a target at 1,000 yards because of this angle that's built into your rail, okay? So unless you're trying to shoot a 1,000 yards or more, a zero MOA rail will work. Well, I say that. I I'm, I'm going to go with 500. It's kind of the conventional wisdom. But if you're like me and you're a hunter and your shots are 100, 150, 200 yards, a zero MOA rail will work for you no problem. Okay. So anyway, guys, I hope this helps. It's an interesting thing for me. There's a lot of geometry and trigonometry in, uh, in all of this. And uh, most of your scopes are one quarter MOA per click. So four clicks makes a minute, and a minute makes about an inch if you're at 100 yards. So anyway, remember that number, 1.047, and you can multiply or divide depending on your range. Hope this was informative. Guys, please like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. If you have video ideas, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, shoot us an email or leave it in the comments. Thanks again. We appreciate it.